Well, hello and welcome to the Informed Traveler Podcast, a weekly travel podcast where our goal is to help you become a more informed traveler. And I'm your host, Randy Sharman. So where did you go for your summer vacation this year? The folks from the tour company Viator recently went through all their booking stats from June to August of this year and came up with the answer to that question of where people went and what they did over the summer. So in a few moments, travel expert Onanda Forbes will join me to discuss some of the findings. Plus, we'll learn about the area of the Santa Maria Valley in California, located in the heart of California's wine country, and perfectly positioned at the halfway point between San Francisco and Los Angeles. And Ken Stewart from Crowfoot Travel Solutions will be along with a few destination ideas and travel deals with our weekly roundup. But first, let's kick things off chatting with travel expert Onanta Forbes, who joins us each week to discuss some of the travel news and travel trends. You can follow her adventures on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Onanta Forbes. OnantaForbes.com is her website. Hi, Onanta. Hi, Brandy. How are you? I'm good. Remember that question when you were uh, going back to school as a kid and the teacher asked, what did you do on your summer vacation? (laughs) So (laughs) we're going to chat a little bit about that. Uh, Interesting stats from Viator, the group of people from Viator, a tour company, on where people went and what they did over the summer holidays. Uh, Some interesting findings, especially in the destinations. Uh, no surprise that, you know, the, the usual one, usual ones stand out like Rome, Paris, London. I uh, know uh, some friends that went to Paris and, and Rome and those places and uh, some of your exotic destinations that you went to. So any anything that stood out for you there? Right. So Viator had a top 10 fastest growing uh, travel plots, spots this summer, and they included Iceland and St. John's, Canada, the West Midlands and the UK. Um, also experiencing strong growth was like Helsinki, Finland, Stockholm in Sweden and Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And particularly, um, travelers were really interested in China. Beijing was um, noted as the fastest growing summer destination by far, with a demand for the city surging like three times year over year, as well as Shanghai, which was nearly two times more bookings compared to last summer. And so not only um, China, but other destinations in the Asia Pacific regions like Indonesia, Osaka, Japan. So um, always interested, I think, people in somewhere different than where they live or maybe a different culture, something that they just want to explore a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. I was surprised about uh, Beijing and Shanghai. Again, we don't know... uh... Viator is a worldwide company, so we don't know who's doing the answering of, of who's going there. Uh, but yeah, and places like uh, Japan, I think Japan has always been a, a, hot, a, a hot spot. Uh, I, I find it interesting in the summertime, though, because <laughs> I don't know what the weather is like in Japan in the summer. Uh, it, you know, like it, it seems like places in Europe would be uh, nice to visit, especially Iceland in the summertime. I'd rather go there than in uh, in the winter months. But but uh, and then the things that people did, uh, and you had a couple of examples just on your own when when you were in uh, Colombia, in the, in South America, Central America. Some of the things you did there, and some of the things you did in Portugal, experienced the culture and the history, especially with the hands-on type of thing, the cooking classes and pottery uh, classes, just learning with the locals, right? Yeah, I think that's it's it it has it goes a long way to really enhancing your trip, like a hands-on class or a lesson led by a local expert. And cooking classes, as you say, were one of the most top most popular experiences. Maybe you're into photography. There's a lot of photography tours. Um in Maui, there's a great guy called Daniel Sullivan and he takes great pictures all over the world, but he also will take you on um uh um, like a photography tour to some of the most beautiful places in Maui. And whether it's on marine life or on land, if you're into sports, there's also like sports lessons. Maybe you're into golfing and painting. So I had mentioned on one of our last podcasts um, while I was on the um, Avalon Waterways uh, cruise uh, on the Douro, I took like a, a bit of a painting class with doing a tile and it was a lot of fun. 
And it just um, makes your mind uh, go in different places. And I think it's kind of nice to learn about the history as well. Now, and when we're talking about sports, like a lot of people are interested, like maybe in um, a kayaking excursion or four-wheel drive. Um, and I know once when I was in Namibia, I did a four-wheel drive over the sand dunes, and that was totally cool. And, um, you know, also kind of like tobogganing down, that's lots of fun. You know, you, you kind of have to think about um, what what interests you, because I think that's the most important thing, is what do you want to explore more? Um, like, for an example, a lot of my clients are now really interested in um, Africa. So they're going on safaris, and one of the top things to do is go on a hot air balloon ride. You know, looking over the Serengeti and, and seeing the animals wake up because it's an early morning departure, and I think, you know, and seeing the sunrise. So things like that are um, pretty amazing as far as adding to your trip. Always good to shop, but these experiences and, and people wanting to, sh to um, you know, f find out or enjoy something that they wouldn't normally do at home is really important to them as well. Well, I think that's the, uh, you just hit it, the nail on the head there. Things that they would, wouldn't normally do at home. <laughs> I think that's one of the biggest keys of people, that, you know, the, because life gets in the way. You're working and looking after your family and doing all those things. You don't have time to go on a kayak excursion, perhaps, or you don't have the opportunity to go on a four-wheel drive adventure or uh, do the mountain biking, depending on your location. Maybe there's no mountains, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. and just doing the the, the fun stuff like uh, that you've always wanted to do but never had the time but you can take the time and it's offered uh, with cooking classes and painting classes and I think it's kind of cool too because you're with another you're with a, a group of other people and you get to know them and and you kind of you bond a little bit right mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be really complex what you're doing like I know you and my partner love the Dallas Cowboys so a lot of people are doing like sport destination trips where they're going to um, destination to see their favorite team play and that's kind of fun as well um uh, as well you know and you're a lot of people are interested in in uh, local festivals whether it's a music festival or a film festival um one of the fun things i did um not that i'm a huge harry potter fan but there's this one bookstore in doro that are, are on when i was going on the doro river in porto called la vera Le, uh, Lello, and it's a beautiful bookstore, um, old books, lots of classics, and part of your admission fee is that you get to pick a couple of books um, to the value of your um, your entrance fee. So it's it's quite busy. You do have to um, book a, a date and a time. You can't just walk in, and even simple things like that. It's um, looking for small independent bookstore. You know contributing to the local economy, but also reading is a huge um, activity, whether you're at home or you're on the road. And, and, and that kind of draws into something fun to do. Yeah, again, it just goes back to uh, taking time to do those things that you enjoy to do or you've always wanted to do but never had the opportunity. And I think more and more uh, travel companies, tour companies, are uh, tapping into that and uh, you know and, and offering those things. Right. So one of my favorite um, excursions that I did on my last trip was going on a walking tour that included food and wine. So we went to different restaurants and tried their specialty, and it was it kind of started off with like an appetizer, then it you know went to a main meal, dessert. Um, you know, different treats along the way. You get to experience the wine that's very um, popular at the destination that maybe you want to think about maybe if they export, pick it up at home or bring it back with you. So lots of opportunities to um, explore um, like, uh, like, you know, food and like farm to table experiences. Mm -hmm. It's um, cause that's really huge right now is, you know, uh, making uh, trying to be as authentic as you can when you are eating your food and, and such um yeah so it, it can range like you know with uh, all the different streaming companies that are out like like netflix and and um 
it's Amazon Prime. People are interested in film location finds. So mm-hmm. that's really been huge. Like I, I um, you know, you maybe you, you have a favorite show that you want to, to check out. Um, so like, for an example, in Hamilton, Ontario, his favorite for summer, uh, like shows like The Umbrella Academy or Handmaid's Tale or The Queen, the Queen's Gambit. So it's kind of fun, um, kind of putting uh, like the, a location to what you've seen. For mm-hmm. me, my, one of my favorite was when I was in Salzburg. I'm a huge Sound of Music fan. And, you know, just picking out the gazebo or where they kind of, where the kids and Julie Andrews fell into the lake when, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. It's, yeah, it is. It, it is fun. Yeah. So I really quite like stuff like that where it kind of um, enhances what you already enjoy and love, but it makes the destination even more special. And it, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it enhances it because, it, you know what, that's why we travel. We want to learn, but we want to be entertained as well. Hmm. Well, it's funny you mentioned the wine and food tours. I did one of those in Pasadena. So it doesn't, uh, in California, it, it doesn't even have to be a, a tr- big exotic destination. Uh, and it's fun. And, and we stopped at one corner where the, they filmed uh, Friends, the TV show. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. And, and again, you, you experience uh, the local foods and the local wines and, and just learn little things about the destination that you would never would uh, know about if you didn't take some, one of those tours. Right. And, you know, sometimes, um, like, you know how sometimes you have a late flight and you don't know what to do with yourself. You know, one of the things that we did when we went to New York a few years ago, we went on the NBC studio tour. Kill some time. Cool totally fun and Mm -hmm. it was you know i didn't plan it it was just something that we kind of thought about it's like what are we going to do for two you know for four hours we're homeless we have to check out of the uh, hotel so something like that's always fun to do as well um you know we uh and it could be any time of year not just summer but um throughout the year whenever you travel Mm -hmm. Exactly. Lots of fun things to do if you just let your imagination wander. Uh, when to Forbes is a travel expert, you can follow her on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Onanta Forbes and onantaforbes.com is her website. Uh, always great to chat, Onanta. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a good week. Well, let's head to the area of the Santa Maria Valley now in California, located in the heart of California's wine country and perfectly positioned at a halfway point between San Francisco and Los Angeles. So joining us now to share with us all the great things to see and do in the Santa Maria Valley is Nathan Tausch. He's the marketing coordinator with Santa Maria Valley. SantaMariaValley.com is the website. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Uh, you know, they always talk about uh, location, location, location in real estate. And it sounds to me like Santa Maria Valley is perfectly located between two major cities in a, in a, in a pretty sweet spot, sounds like. Yeah. So we're centrally located on the central, on the central coast of California. Um, and we're right in the middle of L.A. And, and the Bay Area, about three and a half hours north of L.A. and four hours south of the Bay Area. Yeah, it's great. It's a great spot. We're actually right off the Pacific Coast Highway, which uh, turns into the 101 for a little, but um, that's a great, great road trip that people love taking. Now, it's obviously, it's easy to get to. You got to Los Angeles at one side and uh, San Francisco at the other. Uh, is renting a car the best option? Are there tours available? Like, what would be sort of the best way to to spend a few days there? Am I kind of casually going on my own, uh, doing it that way? Yeah, that's the way I would recommend it. It's, it's going on your own. It's whether it's driving up or, or flying in and renting a car because it's not that long of a drive from either of those airports. You also could fly in to Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo, which makes it an even shorter drive. But it's great being centrally located as you can, you know, go to the beach in the morning, drink your coffee, go to a winery, uh, and go to dinner. And even the next day, you can go on a hike and then uh, do the same thing all over again for a few more days. 
Yeah, it's not just about, I know you're in the heart of wine country, it's not just about uh, touring wine uh, wineries uh, and that sort of thing. There's lots more to it, lots more uh, activities to, to take in, even if you're not a wine lover, right? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's plenty to do if wine isn't your thing. On our website, we actually have some pre-built itineraries and most of those being um, outdoors, whether you're doing solo travel, people like vacations, which I know is a fun thing. You know, it's super nice being in the middle. And the great part is you really don't have to leave. If that's what you're coming for, it's nice, you know, being centrally located. But I mean, there's plenty to do in Santa Maria Valley. We got great wine. Beaches are right over there. Good food. So. Well, yeah, that, I think that would be the whole idea is that, uh, you know, if you're getting there, uh, you've got two major airports in San Francisco and uh, L.A., and then make Santa Maria Valley your final destination, right, and stay there for three or four days, enjoy the, the wine, the food. Uh, one of the things that's uh, on your website is barbecue. So let's first let's talk about uh, wine country and some of the tours available and then some of the food that's available. So... A little bit about our wine country and our whole wine scene. Uh, because we are on the Central Coast and we get all that cool climate, that nice marine layer, we have a lot of Burgundy varietals, or I guess the two major ones. You have uh, your Chardonnay and your Pinot Noir. Um, we also grow cool climate Syrahs and we grow, I mean, there's a ton of stuff. There's some Aligote, there's some Gamay, there's, there's a ton going on over here. Um, The Fox and Canyon Wine Trail, uh, it's comparable to the Silverado Trail in Napa. Basically, it's, you know, it's a perfect, gorgeous back road, and you'll hit 14 wineries on the way, and they're all estate tastings, and they're all just amazing. Well, I do like a good barbecue, and uh, one of the pages on your website at uh, santamariavalley.com is all about barbecue. So uh, Mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's the deal with that? Yeah, so Santa Maria Barbecue started uh, 150 years ago. There's about six or seven main places that stick to the authenticity of it right now. But it started with the Rancheros. You know, there's it's it's basically cowboy country out here where we are an ag community, um, a lot of ranchers and stuff. And what they do is they would dig a pit, they would fill it with red oak, and from there you have a large pit with a grate and they would cook tri-tip sirloin chicken it's all with a dry rub there's no barbecue sauce you know you're not putting any sugary stuff on it it's pico de gallo it's a simple salad garlic bread piquinto beans with that same seasoning and it's just a hearty hearty meal and it goes great with you know a pinot or if you want to go a little darker you can get a straw in there but sounds yummy so I'm looking on your website, uh, again, santamariavalley.com, and, and, you know, you scroll ac- across the top. Things to do, there's lots of things to do, as you mentioned, uh, the, the wineries, of course, that we've been talking about. There's hiking and the beaches. There's also the breweries and the tap rooms. So if I'm planning a visit, is, is there a, a specific area that's more accommodating as far as uh, places to stay where it's quick access? Uh, how does that work? Yeah, so... Our lodging options, we have a a wide range. Um, You can go anywhere from the boutique side. We have a couple boutique hotels, one of them being the Winestone Inn. It has, you know, it's a 12-room wine boutique hotel. It's it's in the heart of Old Town Orchid, which is just a couple-minute drive, and it's just amazing. And there's also the historic Santa Maria Inn, which is centrally located in the city, and it's, I mean, it's hosted plenty of celebrities all throughout, you know, over a hundred years of of history. And then we also have, you know, the big names, like we have a Hampton Inn. We have, we have all the big, the big brand hotels. So for those Mm -hmm. people that are loyal to their, their points and they like doing that, we have that option. And they're all, I would say, equally distributed throughout uh, and all very close to the freeway. So it's, it's pretty nice. We're, we're pretty much, we hug the 101 pretty much, which is super good. Uh, our affordability is another thing that we we really love about Santa Maria Valley is you can spend your nights in Santa Maria Valley for half the price of Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo. It's just awesome. You get to stay here 
you know, go in the morning, hit your spots and come back and enjoy Santa Maria Valley um, with your hotel stay, whether it's at one of those big brands or the boutique side of it. But when is the best time to visit? Is the harvest time like this time of year a good time? Uh, when when would be the best time to, to visit? It's actually kind of odd because when we start hitting October and stuff is when it heats up to, you know, it'll hit the 80s and stuff and it'll get a little warmer. It's kind of like our joke around. It's kind of our summer, um, you know, as fall picks up. But, uh, man, you can come any time of the year. It's that's that's another great thing about it. You don't we do get a lot of snowbirds and stuff, but it's sunny and you can go to the beach. And I mean, you don't have to worry about that at all. Rain isn't too much of an issue either so even during those you know spring rainy months it's it's uh nothing to worry about uh any uh events coming up that people might want to uh look at you know surrounding a visit to to see yeah so we do have a few marquee events that are uh spread out throughout the year one of them being the santa maria barbecue fest um so the month of may is barbecue month and we have the Barbecue Fest, which features a competition with backyard barbecuers, you know, who are just, you know, they want to enter and they want to get the public's opinion on their food and, and win a trophy. But we also mm-hmm. have the, the, like, I would say professional competitive side where we have bigger teams competing and there's a judges panel and it, it gets pretty competitive and it's it's a really awesome time. And we have tons of local um, people that. That make great barbecue. We also have the Strawberry Fest uh, in April. That's at the Santa Maria Fair Park. It's it's a big celebration. Uh, like I said, we're an ag community, and strawberries being one of the the big commodities we have, along with grapes. It's a uh, it's just a super great time for family. Um, we actually coming up. Uh, I know we're in September right now. It's uh it's Wine Month. It's California Wine Month right now. And throughout the year, there's tons going on at each winery. It's live music. It's it's uh, markets. It's summer passport tastings. It's it's all over. But uh, right now is California Wine Fest, and we also have a pretty big rodeo. We have a PRCA rodeo in Santa Maria, which is the official. It's basically the NFL of rodeos, and they make their tour all across America. And one of their stops is in Santa Maria oh, at cool. the Elks uh, Rodeo Grounds. We also have a giant car show culture, whether it's C10s, it's Corvairs, it's any Ford truck, or it's just, you know, the West Coast Customs, which is um, one of the nation's biggest. And it they take the whole weekend and they drive up and down Broadway and everyone's showing off their sweet hot rods and, you know, they got <laughs> hydraulics, some paint jobs and... uh yeah, there's always car shows going on. It's super cool. So if you're big into that, um, I guess uh, I guess the best way is just to go onto your website and uh, SantaMariaValley dot com. Check out all the things there and kind of kind of plan a visit. See the see some of the things you want to do and and some of the events you might want to take in. Anything else you might want to add? Yeah, I mean our website SantaMariaValley dot com. It's it's a great website and there's the itineraries. We have a wine map that you can also request a physical um, brochure of, and that'll take you all through the Fox and Canyon Trail. And we also have our visitor's guide, which is just a great overall understanding of the area and what we're about, um, including our culture, which our, uh, our live action scene with the Pacific Coast Theater at Allen Hancock Community College. They have some of the best the best theater in the nation. And they have stars like Robin Williams uh, perform there. He, he started out there. Zach Efron, he's actually a Central Coast native. Um, he participated there and acted there. We also have the, the Great American Melodrama in uh, Vlaudeville. So there's there's tons of culture cultural things going on, which is super nice. Coming into a community and you can kind of experience what, you know, the people in that community do and how they live. I think that's part of the the best part about travel is seeing how other people, you know, do their thing. Mm-hmm. So one promotion we have going on right now, going back to the hotels is our, our key card promotion, which is going to start. It's actually going to start fairly soon. And what that means is guests 
that are staying at a local hotel in Santa Maria Valley, they're going to be able to go to certain locations and show their key card and they'll get a discount, whether it's a couple dollars off a wine tasting. Yeah. It's, you know, buy one, get one at, you know, the, the Dana Adobe or the Dune Center. It's, it's cool getting, Mm -hmm. getting those discounts for supporting the community. Every dollar counts, as they say. Uh, Nathan yeah. Tausch is the uh, marketing coordinator with Santa Maria Valley. SantaMariaValley.com is where you can go to get more information and to plan your visit. It sounds like uh, lots of things uh, to see and do in Santa Maria Valley. looks like it's a, it's a fun place to visit. I uh, appreciate your time, Nathan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Randy. This is the Informed Traveler podcast. I'm Randy Sharman. Just want to remind you of our website, theinformedtraveler.org. That's where you can find our contact page if you have any questions or comments about the podcast. You can also email me as well with any questions you might have. My email address is randy at theinformedtraveler.org. And if you want to get up-to-date travel info through the week or just see a few amusing travel stories and links, you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash informedtraveler on Instagram at Informed Traveler or you can follow me on X at Informed Traveler. So now, as always, we'd like to end the show with our weekly roundup and joining us to do that is Ken Stewart from Crowfoot Travel Solutions. Good day, sir. Uh, Hello, Randy. Hello, everybody. Uh, We're now in the last few weeks of what the suppliers consider summer season and uh, fall season. Uh, even though it's not really fall yet, but we're going to be starting the fall winter season for 2024, 2025 in a couple of weeks. So if you didn't get away last season and you want to get away this season, uh, you should really be looking now as the suppliers and resorts of uh, all their products and uh, uh, resorts, everything all loaded for the sun destinations. And we've been selling them since back in March for some dates in the early part of the year already. So our styles are, uh, sales are really, really strong. And a lot of the popular dates, so we talk about this a lot. And, and again, it's we just want to remind you, because popular dates like Christmas, New Year's, Family Day are selling really, really well. And they send to sell quickly, uh, because that's when a lot of the teachers and stuff are off. And, uh, you know, people have that opportunity to get away. So some resorts are sold out already, and some have limited availability. And especially if you've got, uh, the, you're looking for those larger rooms if you've got three kids. So give us a call, discuss your plans, we're going to help you out. Uh, you'll find that uh, we rarely uh, have or will see any specials uh, going forward and probably not have any last-minute deals. I can't remember that any time we've had a last-minute deal. We do get the odd specials, which we talk about here on the show, but again, Mm -hmm. last-minute deals, not likely. Yeah, you're right. We say it all the time. If you have a specific... A uh, week or two in mind, do not wait because you'll be disappointed. Uh, Disney World and Orlando, they're waiting for you. Uh, until October the 14th, <laughs> travelers can save uh, $600 per family, up to four people on a flight and hotel package uh, to visit down there. Uh, plus, if you book in, uh, right now and read with the gruesome deposit of $50 per person, you can change or cancel your booking up to eight days prior to your departure with no charge. And if you have the time, double dip with your air flights and uh, book a cruise out of maybe Port Canaveral. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you're already going to be down there and everything like that. So uh, this is all with Air Canada vacations. And uh, reminder, those bookings always earn you aeroplane points. And the cool thing with Air Canada vacations is you've got lots of aeroplane points. Convert them into an Air Canada gift card and use them to pay for uh, these packages. So you've got more savings and uh, can spend some of your other dollars on something else. So always a great getaway with Air Canada vacations. And remember, like I say, Collect your airplane points, turn around and spend them on the trip. Mm-hmm. And getting back to uh, Disney World in Orlando, they have that rapid train now to uh, get you to the to the coast if you want, to the beaches. That's actually a good point. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. So again, we can sail out of uh, Miami or Fort Lauderdale with mm-hmm. these as well, too. Opens up uh, a lot of cruise options for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, TTC Group, uh, and again, you probably know them by name, such as Insight Vacations, Trafalgar, uh, Brendan Vacations, and Cost Saver. They want you to tour next year with them. Right now, savings of 10% on select 2025 tours. And if you're a past guest, uh, you can uh, double your offer, uh, which is usually 5% for being a past guest, to 10% on any of the tours that are not on sale. So again, we talk about it seems like a long way away, but the dates do tend to sneak up on us. Exactly. Uh, Windstar Cruises, both sailing ships and boutique yachts. 
Uh, again, we talk a lot about them. They're favorites of ours. They come out every Thursday where they're seven for seven. So seven offers for seven sailings for seven days, a uh, new set each week. Uh, this week, they're fo- focusing on the Mediterranean Europe for the fall and early winter seasons, which is kind of cool. Uh, again, airfares are usually lower. Uh, uh, seven to 16 day sailings to choose from. So if Windstar has been on your travel radar, I'll just use that free phone call. Uh, give us a shout out. We'll have a conversation and see what we can do for you. And if uh, you're looking for something particular, we can also make note of that and keep an eye for when it does come out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uniworld River Cruises. I want to take you to Peru and the Amazon in 2025. Savings of 10% on 2025 cruises with their early booking savings through September 30th. So still some time left to jump on that one. And uh, that's actually combinable. Again, if you sailed on uh, Uniworld before, they've got their River Heritage Club savings. And get you another $150 to $700 per person for clients. Uh, and again, depending on which cruise you're choosing. And you can also choose one of their uh, many other selected itineraries that they offer, and they've got tours and sailings worldwide. Uh, we could save you another 10 or 20%. So, again, lots of opportunities for savings if you're thinking of a river cruise. I would love to do a river cruise. I think, I think that's, really that's cool. next on my list, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy list. who can help you out. <laughs> It's like, it's getting, it's getting, that list is getting longer and longer, but it's. I know, I know. <laughs> I cropped off one and I add three. It's like <laughs> I shouldn't be in this business. It really helps make the list too long. Uh, Viking Ocean Cruises, mostly known for their river sailings as well, are also sailing with their ocean ships in South America, Panama Canal, Hawaii, and the South Pacific, and they've got three airfares included. Uh, reduced cabin fares, all for only a $25 deposit, again, by September 30th. We've got a few things that are ending on that date uh, for select 2024, 2025 sailing. So you still got some opportunity to check that out and maybe lock yourself in. Mm-hmm. And speaking of uh, never river cruise before, this one would be for you. Uh, yeah, or even if you have, uh, Scenic River Cruises, hosting an event here in Calgary. Where you can get all the answers and ideas you need to pick the perfect first or second or third cruise for yourself. Uh, October 22nd in the morning at the Carriage House on McLeod Trail South. So give us a call or send us an email and we'll send you the link or we can actually even register for you, whatever works first. So uh, we'd like to see you out there. That would be fun to to learn all about. Like I said, I've never done a river cruise. That's a perfect event for me. And the cool thing about it too is a lot of times they have uh, special offers uh, on uh, cruises when you do attend one of these events. So you can, uh, again, save some more money. Mm. And speaking of same money, remember online pricing is almost identical to what any agent can find for you if they're worth their salt. Uh, not only can we assist you before, help with some suggestions in the planning, uh, and assist you again during and if necessary after the trip, so you don't have to look after stuff totally by yourself. You've got somebody got your back. If you've never used a real life travel agent, try one out. You might uh, like to see how easy the process is, and how much more enjoyable in the end your vacation is too. And to that point, uh, we don't usually do shout outs, but I ran into a couple of your clients the other night, Sue and Dave Slot. And uh, ah. speaking, of, speaking of travel agents having their back, they said that uh, they were in Portugal. They booked their flights through you and you called them and said, hey, your flight is canceled and uh, looked after them. So um, kudos to you and uh, a shout out to them. Yeah, and thank by you, the way, they're, they're, they're avid <laughs> listeners to the podcast. That's why we're doing a show. <laughs> show they listen all the time. Uh, have a good day, guys. <laughs> uh, again, like I say, thank you to all our clients, including Dave and Sue, and to you, hopefully our new clients, for listening each week, uh, helping us reach our 25th anniversary milestone this month. And do remember to like both Crowfoot Travel and the Informed Traveler Facebook pages. Uh, and then check them out fairly regular. Uh, again, you're in particular are always got uh, the latest updates and everything on there. And a lot of times we'll share them on our page. And again, there's uh, all kinds of different travel stories, tips, tricks, and advice, and even some specials that we're not able to talk about here in the show. So again, worth uh, checking them out, liking us. Can't hurt. And it's and it can't hurt to uh, give you a call to, uh, and what is that number? In Calgary, 403-241-7140. If you're outside Calgary, toll free, one 877 Five one one five five one one, and you too can relax. It's all taken care of. Indeed, sir. Have a great week, everyone. 
And that is our show for this week. If you have comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a show idea, send that along as well. My email is randy at theinformedtraveler.org. And if you like what you heard, tell a friend. You can check out our website, too, at theinformedtraveler.org. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Travel safe and be an informed traveler. Traveler.